This is Katherine Nightingale at Chattanooga State Community College, and this video is for Calculus 3 on the topic of polar coordinates, section 10.3. This should mostly be review from Pre-Cal 2. For polar coordinates, we define the origin as the pole and the x-axis as the initial ray. Each point in polar coordinates is located by assigning to it a polar coordinate pair, r theta, where r is the directed distance from the pole to the point, and theta is the angle between the initial ray and the ray made from the origin to the point. Let's start by just graphing a few points in polar coordinates. So on the grid given, we want to graph the following points. And these are given in polar coordinates. So the first number is your r, the length of the ray. And the second number is either given in degrees or radians. And it's the angle that's made with the x-axis. Okay, this first point, 3 and the angle 225 degrees, Let's look at the angle first. We have 225 degrees, which I can think of as 45 degrees more than 180. So I know it's going to be in the third quadrant. Now if I look at my graph, I know that this x-axis is 0 degrees. The vertical axis is 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians. The left horizontal axis is 180 degrees, or pi radians, and the lower vertical axis is 270 degrees, or 3 pi over 2. Now, 225 degrees will be halfway between 180 and 270. So here's 225 degrees, and I count out 3 from the origin. So because my r is 3, I want my ray to have a length of 3. And so this red dot is the point 3, 225 degrees. Now let's look at the second point, negative 5 and 45 degrees. Anytime you have a negative r, it reverses the direction, just like with vectors. And so instead of going out um, to the right or along the whatever angle I'm given, I'm going to go the opposite direction along the angle that I'm given. So there is my negative 5, 45 degrees. Because instead of going to 45 degrees, I go in the opposite direction which would be the same as uh, 5, 225 degrees. Okay, this third point, the negative angle means that we're going clockwise from the x-axis. So let's start by identifying the angle negative 2 pi over 3. We'll go clockwise 2 pi over 3 from the x-axis. So here's the angle. And my r is 4, so I'm going to count out 4 spaces from the origin. So here's my point 4, negative 2 pi over 3. Next, I want to graph the polar equation r equals 7. Notice that there's no restriction on the angle, meaning that the angle can be anything between 0 and 2 pi. So what happens is that's all points with a distance of 7 from the origin. So it will actually form a circle with a radius of 7. So there's my graph of r equals 7 in polar coordinates. Anytime you have r equals a number, it will be a circle defined with that radius.
So that's the basics on how to plot points and graph r equals a number in polar coordinates. Now let's look at some slightly more complicated graphs. We want to graph the sets of points whose polar coordinates satisfy the following equations and inequalities. So the first one we have 11 pi over 12 is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to 5 pi over 4. So what we'll want to do is identify those angles. And we also have the restriction that r is between 0 and 4 inclusive. So let's start by looking at our common angles, 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. Now because r is between 0 and 4, I'm going to mark 4 spots from the origin in every direction. And we get this circle, so between 0 and 4 would be inside of that circle. Now let's look at the restriction on our angles. So 11 pi over 12 is going to be almost to pi, but slightly below. So there's my angle 11 pi over 12. And 5 pi over 4 we dealt with in the last example. It is 45 degrees more than 180 degrees. So it's down in the third quadrant halfway through. So there's 5 pi over 4. So I'm restricted to being between those angles and inside the circle and so I end up with this shaded area. Now if I clean up my graph just a little bit, that would be the graph of the set of points that satisfies those two restrictions together. Now in the second example we have r is greater than or equal to 2 and theta is between negative pi and 0. So here's negative pi and 0 and r is greater than or equal to 2, so that's the outside of the circle that will be shaded. So here's my circle with radius 2, and I'm restricted to the lower half plane because theta has to be between negative pi and 0. And now r has a distance of 2 or more from the origin, so I would shade everything outward from that circle and I would end up with this graph. So that's how you graph inequalities or sets of inequalities in polar coordinates is just look at your angle restrictions, look at your R restrictions, and then shade the overlap of the two restrictions. Next, we'll look at how to convert between polar coordinates and Cartesian coordinates. For that, we actually go back to some trigonometry equations, such as cosine of theta equals x over r and sine of theta equals y over r. And we create these conversions that x in the Cartesian system will equal r cosine theta y equals r sine theta and then we get a Pythagorean identity x squared plus y squared equals r squared and tangent of theta equals y over x. So these are the four basic conversions that you will need whenever you're trying to go from Cartesian to polar or from polar to Cartesian, either way. Okay, so we have our identities, and we want to find the Cartesian coordinates for the following points given in polar coordinates. So we have polar, and we want Cartesian.
The first one is 3 negative pi over 4. So we plug it into the x equals r cosine theta. So x equals 3 cosine of negative pi over 4, which is 3 square root of 2 over 2. y is equal to 3 sine of negative pi over 4, which because we are in the fourth quadrant because of the negative pi over 4 degrees, or radians, rather, that would be negative square root of 2 over 2, and my r is 3. So my point becomes 3 square root of 2 over 2 and negative 3 square root of 2 over 2. So that's the Cartesian coordinates of the point. The next one, 5, 7 pi over 6, I know that 7 pi over 6 is in the third quadrant because it's greater than pi but less than 3 pi over 2. And that point is going to be negative root 3 over 2 and negative 1 half using my unit circle, the cosine and sine of 7 pi over 6. Okay, now using my conversion formulas, I have x equals 5 cosine of 7 pi over 6, which is 5 negative root 3 over 2 and y equals 5 sine 7 pi over 6, which is 5 times negative 1 half. So my point is going to be negative 5 root 3 over 2 and negative 5 halves. Now because I'm in the third quadrant, it makes sense that both the x and the y are negative. So that can be a quick check for yourself do you have the correct signs given the um, quadrant that you're in based on the angle? Okay, now we want to go the other way and we'll be given a point in Cartesian coordinates and we'll find the polar coordinates. Now this requires different formulas. This will require the second two formulas. So we want to find an angle between 0 and 2 pi and a positive r to change these Cartesian coordinates into polar coordinates. So our first point is negative 2, negative 2. So let's think about where this lies in the plane. This is in the third quadrant, and so I know that my angle has to be between pi and 3 pi over 2, and I know my r is going to be positive. So I'll start with the angle. I'll use tangent of theta equals y over x, so negative 2 over negative 2. So tangent of theta equals 1. And now I can do the inverse tangent to find theta, but that might just be a reference angle. You have to think about the quadrant that you're in. So we got pi over, over 4 for inverse tangent of 1, but we know we're in the third quadrant, and so the pi over 4 is a reference angle, and we'll add that to pi. So we'll get theta is actually 5 pi over 4. Now to find the r, we're going to use the x squared plus y squared equals r squared formula. So r squared equals negative 2 squared plus negative 2 squared. So r squared equals 8. r equals square root of 8 or 2 square root of 2. And so my point in polar coordinates is 2 square root of 2 for the r and 5 pi over 4 for the theta. OK, 
Okay, the next point is actually more straightforward because it's in the first quadrant. I don't have to think about the reference angle. So because I have the point 3, 4 and both are positive, I know it's in the first quadrant. So I'll do tangent of theta equals y over x. So theta equals inverse tangent of 4 over 3, which is approximately 0 0.927. When you're putting that in your calculator, make sure that you check the mode. If they want radians, make sure you're in radian mode, and if they want degrees, make sure you're in degree mode. So there's my angle. Now I use the x squared plus y squared equals r squared to find r. So r squared equals 3 squared plus 4 squared, or r squared equals 25, so r equals 5. Now my point will be 5 and then my angle of 0 0.927 radians. Okay, so in summary, to go from polar to Cartesian, we use the top two formulas, x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. And to go from Cartesian to polar, we use the last two formulas, tangent theta equals y over x, and x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That concludes changing points from polar to Cartesian and Cartesian to polar. For changing equations from one to the other, please watch video two.